Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to There is No Crying in Crochet. We are the podcast that tackles all of your crochet frustrations and helps you get to the other side. I am Biz from Busy Crochet. Hi. And I'm Debbie from Madam Stitch. Hello. Welcome to the show. Um, all right. So just to get some business out of the way, go ahead and click like and subscribe on YouTube for notifications. I'm at Busy Crochet. And Debbie is at Madam Stitch Crochet. Make sure you follow both of us for more of the videos and tutorials. Um, if you are streaming this on Facebook, please give StreamYard permission to see your name so that we can see your name in the chat. You only have to do it once and it only is used for this purpose. We're not collecting your information to do anything with it. All right, Debbie, tell me what is up this week. Oh my goodness, so much crocheting going on. I have a big project coming up in October um, and I'm making a blanket designed by 11 oh. other people. Oh so wow. I am making all of the squares um, yes. and it's so much fun. I just don't get a chance to work with other people's patterns very often, mainly because I'm so busy trying to get the ideas that are in my head <laughs> out and mm -hmm. on paper. I, I understand. Um, right so it's so much fun to to work with other people's patterns and mm -hmm. kind of get inside their heads about how they think about crochet because we all sort of see it differently oh so for sure. i almost i have my square done i have a second one almost done and i'm going to try to get another couple of squares done this weekend so that i can start showing off all of the, the crochet thing I love about squares is that they're such simple projects that uh, you don't you know they yep. don't take any stress. Oh, this is so not stressful at all. I'm I'm planning a heavy evening of crochet tonight, so I'm all for it. So, Biz, what's up with you awesome. this week? This week, it's been a lot of, um, well, of course, we had the holiday on Monday, so I um, got to chill out with my husband, which was really nice. And then uh, this week, it's just been a really nice, I woke up every single day going, Man, I am so glad that I have no responsibilities today. <laughs> this was just such a chill <laughs> week for me. So I'm, I, it was good. Um, and I, I got a lot of work done, but it was just because there was no pressure, you know? And I love weeks like that. Mm -hmm. uh, we, you had said that you got some rain this week. We did too. Not destructive, but like yours was way different. You know, this has been a weird summer for us. Everyone else is having these massive heat waves. And we actually... For the first time this summer, we had five days in a row of 90 plus degree weather, which is, it's also unusual for us. But last night I was driving home from Philadelphia in uh, along country roads and the skies just opened up. You could see the lightning was right overhead and it oh, rained man. for quite some time. And i I'm just shocked that our little Daisy wasn't completely traumatized. She seemed to be fine, but we had water in the basement, water in the laundry room, not much, but you know, enough to be annoying. Does, um, she, does she deal well with thunder boomers? Like, does she get scared no. when the thunder see Frankie does Frankie freaks out. Yeah. She crawls under the bed and that's the last we see of her, but she was fine. I don't know what that's the deal awesome. was. That's awesome. All right, so we have been in on Instagram. We've been doing a challenge to go along with the the theme for our month is fall fashion. And so today, though, is our crochet skills class. So we're going to be talking about a little bit um, something else today, other than fall fashion. But we do have some business to take care of. Um, from that, we need to show this week's Instagram challenge winner. So we have a challenge if. If you are on Instagram, um, if you follow the both of us, I mean, it's not required that you follow us. We love it if you do. Um, but to participate in it, there's a hashtag that you need to use. And every day we put, post a prompt for you to post a picture and then use this hashtag that gets you entered into um, a drawing for a pattern, a free pattern from Deb or myself on our Ravelry um, stores. So this week's Instagram winner is bah, bah, da, 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 PBJ Crochets. Congratulations. And we will reach out to you on Instagram. Do you like our new format? We're doing something fancy this week. Um, oh my gosh. I love it. 
<laughs> so it's like so professional looking. <laughs> what are we doing? Um, but so we will reach out to you, PBJ Crochets, and um, give you the uh, code that you need to get your free pattern. Um, and this week, our crochet skills topic is going to be about gauge. And uh, before we start on that, though, I wanted to quick um, share some things that gauge gets used on. So I have a small presentation that I worked very hard on. So we're going to do this. And we're on the wrong picture. So hang on just a second. That figures my first time. All right. The most common projects for which you don't want to skip gauge are baby clothes for sure, because you've got to fit those little bodies, the measurements that they give you. And so many times in these patterns, they give you like five different size choices to work with. So you want to make sure that your gauge is right on so that they fit the babies and adult clothes. When you're making sweaters, anything that fits the body, you are going to want to make sure that your gauge is as close to or right on as possible. Your heads, your hands, and your feet. Once again, we're dealing with your body. So if it's going on you, you want to make sure that the fit is right and you're going to want to hit gauge. Oh, look at lovely. I love that hat. That is, um, <laughs> that is Debbie's new granny square sun hat that she put out. Make sure you visit her uh, website and get that. So these are some uncommon projects that you might not have realized you will benefit by getting Gage. There's little Daisy. Daisy oh, she's so cute. Hair. Yes, she is. So things like <laughs> wine bottle covers and squares and, you know, little adornments for your dog, even, even um, toys mm -hmm. also benefit from reaching Gage because especially like in the, the little submarine, if you want those little animals to fit inside that submarine, you're going to want to hit gauge. And look at that camper wagon. That was awesome. Isn't that fun? <laughs> um, and I'll tell you what, that uh, surfboard that's on top of that camper was enormous. So I think that I probably should have gone down a hook size, but I didn't. So we will come back to this. <laughs> we will come back to this when we're ready to talk a little bit more about how to achieve gauge. But So yeah. This week, our subject is gauge. So, Debbie, what is gauge and gauge swatching? Well, I'm going to cheat and read, but it's basically, it is literally the number of stitches and rows per inch or how tall and how wide your stitches are. And a gauge swatch, typically it's measured four inches square. So usually when you're in a pattern and you see gauge, you'll you usually see something to the to the effect of um, this many stitches by this many rows equals four inches. That isn't necessarily the size mm -hmm. of your gauge swatch, however. You want your gauge swatch, we'll talk about it a little bit later, but you want your gauge swatch to be bigger because the edges mm -hmm. of your work tend to pull and distort the measurements around it. And a lot of times those things are in seams or on edgings or something like that. So it doesn't matter because they get pulled to the right size. Um, right. So our gauge swatch needs to be a little bit bigger in order to get an accurate measurement of the four by four. And I do want to share that Debbie does have an entire article on what is gauge um, she's done a deep dive study into teaching you how to read crochet patterns. And this happens to be one of her blog posts. And so I'm just recommending, write this down. This is going to be in the show, obviously, afterwards. So every time you watch this, it's going to be there. But write it down so that you can go and take a look at it because it's going to be good information. For you. And just so you know, I'm updating it to include a couple of other things that I've since learned since I posted that um, blog post. Mm. Okay. Um, so let's talk about why is gauge important? Oh, me? Um, well, for one thing, one of the most important reasons is when you meet gauge, you are assure, ensuring that your finished object, whatever you're making, mm -hmm. is the same size as the one that the designer made in the sample. Mm -hmm. So yeah. You know, there are projects that don't necessarily need a gauge swatch, 
-hmm. But again, if you want to get the same size, it, it, even if I'm making a scarf that's a repetitive stitch pattern and, um, you know, I've picked the, the yarn that the designer has asked for, I still want to make sure that I meet gauge mm -hmm. because I want to make sure that A, I don't run out of yarn before I finish it mm -hmm. and B, um, mm -hmm. that it's the size that I had, you know, I don't want it to be eight inches wide if it's supposed to be six inches wide mm -hmm. or 50 inches long if it's supposed to be 80. So you want, you want to make sure that you're getting this the right size. Yes. Um, I was going to bring up this picture too um, because specifically for me, I make a lot of sweaters for like family and friends and stuff like that. Um, you want to make sure that you're reaching gauge because like the, the way that the item fits whomever is receiving it, it has to be right on. And I gauge for almost everything that I make if it's going on a body. It doesn't matter what it is. And I hate mm -hmm. gauging, hate it. But I do it because <clears throat> I don't want to put a lot of work because I did this before, you know, before I started gauging and before it became really important to me, um, I didn't. I would make a lot of, of things and, and put in a lot of work and a lot of hours and all of that stuff. And then it didn't fit. It was huge. I mean, there was a hat that I made one time that you could have used. I actually did turn it into a market bag because it was so big. <laughs> um, so That's really big. <laughs> it, is, it was enormous. Because as I'm working on it, I'm like, gosh, this seems like it's really, really big. <laughs> I wonder if this pulls in later. It never did. So um, I turned it into a market bag because it was. I'm like, I'm not ripping all of it out and I'm not starting over. So it's going to have to become something else. Yeah. Another thing that I, that we don't think about because we, we just don't see this as a, a problem. Um, I substitute yarns. I try to substitute yarns, all, right? All um, the time. And I have learned the hard way with many um, lost hours that if you don't get the right gauge with the new yes. yarn, the one that's yes. not called for in the pattern, you're not <laughs> going to get the, the resulting, um, yep. th like your market bag, like your market bag hat. <laughs> you just, if you don't do a gauge swatch when you're substituting yarn, that's a big no-no. Make sure yeah. that you always do that gauge swatch. Yeah. Well, and because if you want to use something different, and I know it, you, people probably understand this already, but I'm just going to throw it out for, for there for anybody who doesn't automatically know. Just because it says a number four on it, or just because it says it's a DK weight, or just because it says it's a fingering or whatever, and you're replacing mm -hmm. like for like, you still have to look at... Um, what you're getting for yardage, what you're getting for ounces, what you're getting for all of the, you know, all of those little numbers on the side mean something. And it also means you're going to get so many stitches per, um, you know, inch or whatever, like they call it wraps per inch. I still don't know how to do that. <laughs> I gotta learn, but um, I have to do those gauges because a lot of times I will switch something that actually is thinner or thicker than what they're calling mm -hmm. for in the pattern. And I may have to go up a hook size. I may have to go down a hook size. Something is going to have to change. Yeah. It makes a huge difference. Yes, um, it does. Huge. And difference. it's one of those evils of crocheting and pattern reading. And it's something you really want to learn, especially if you want to keep upping your game. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Oh, we've got, Connie says her water bottle holder <laughs> became a drawstring pouch. <laughs> we've got very large things going on here. <laughs> we do. They just keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. But I mean, and that's why, you know, gauge sucks, but you, it's, it's a good skill to master. Alrighty, let's keep going on this. I think we've hammered home the reasons for, um, let's see. I'm gonna. <laughs> so achieving your gauge, I'm going to use your picture, Debbie. Oh, there you go. So this is what you were referring to as far as making your sample larger than um, 
just the square, just the tiny little bit of information they're giving you. Right. Now, this is a little bit of overkill because at the, this is a scarf and it's done lengthwise. So what you're seeing is from top to bottom of the picture, it's widthwise. And it and the width part of the picture is actually what's going to happen lengthwise so that those stripes happen along the length of the scarf. So when I made this gauge swatch, it's about six inches, seven inches wide, I think. But I wanted to do the entire width of the scarf just to make sure that the width was going to turn out the way I thought and the, that the stripes were going to be where I wanted them to be. Um, so I was kind of working that out. But normally in a gauge swatch, you really only need about six to seven inch, seven inches square. Mm -hmm. um, and then you lay the uh, whatever you have, you can measure it with a tape measure. You can pin it out and then measure it or whatever. I happen mm -hmm. to have this fancy wooden one from Loop of London. Um, and it, I love it because it just, there's no question that's where the gauge is right yeah. in that box. I used to have a fancy one and I have misplaced it over the years. So me and my um, trusty um, tape measure, I, I have an actual... It's over there, but an actual one that you use for woodworking that my, my husband gave me. And it's, it's always true. And the reason I don't use the other ones, like the fabric ones is because over time, um, fabric tape measures will actually stretch out because you pull on them. So it's good for you to use something that is firm, um, like mm -hmm. a, a regular plastic ruler mm -hmm. or a tape measure or something like that, that's never going to change. Exactly. All right. So I'm going to just go ahead and put this down. You see our gorgeous faces. <laughs> so, um, all right. So if we have to adjust our gauge swatch, uh, there's a couple of different ways to do it. And, um, so I'm just going to start with the first one. If your swatch is too narrow or too wide, changing the hook will correct it. All right. So let me put that in layman's terms. The hook size determines the, the width of the stitch. So it, if you want Not to adjust, way, if way. it's too big, you need to go down in hook size. If it's too, too um, small, you need to go up in hook size. So okay. hook size determines your stitch width. Okay. So do that again. Width, you have to go which way? Down or up? What if it's, if it's too if big? It's too wide. If it's too wide, mm -hmm. then you need to go down a hook size. Okay. And if it's too short? Okay. How do you, that how do you make rows. I know this is, this is a tough one. There's a thing called the golden loop. Golden so loop. think, think about it. I know a golden loop. Um, think about how you make a double crochet. Mm -hmm. So you yarn over, you insert your hook in the stitch mm -hmm. and you pull up a loop. So okay. that first loop that you pull up, mm -hmm. the height of that determines the height of your stitch. Okay. So if you're like me, I don't usually have a lot of gap between my hook and the work. So that golden loop tends to be a little bit shorter. So I have a little more difficulty meeting row gauge. I can okay. do stitches just fine, mm. but row gauge will get me into trouble. And that's a tough right. one because if you think about how, if you're an experienced crochet or if you've been doing it for a while, you have a rhythm and there's a, there's a height that you pull that golden loop Every up. time. Mm -hmm. And, and it just, it changing, it takes an act of God. It does. It's, not, it's too much to <laughs> concentrate on. <laughs> so you're, you're kind of going, uh, uh. one of the rules of thumb that I have heard from another crocheter is that when you pull up that loop, have just a teeny bit, teeny bit of daylight underneath the hook. So okay. that your hook isn't pressed right against the fabric. And in general, you'll get, but what I need to point out, and you know this biz, 
Mm -hmm. every every single crocheter is unique Mm -hmm. there is no one way to do it and so we all have our own way of making the stitches of pulling them up of getting the rhythm going yeah and the designer is the one who made the call the designer is the one who put the gauge in there so if you want your you want your finished object to look like hers or his you have to meet their gauge so that golden loop is really tricky. Ah, you are most. We welcome. are here to help. <laughs> um, but no, I'm glad you brought that up too because I've watched it done, but it was so long ago that I've not kept it because you know when you were talking about it's so stressful to actually have to think about doing the golden loop because you know how you and I are very much about crochet is mindful for us. It's something mm-hmm. where we relax. When you have to think that hard about something, it takes, it like sucks the fun right out of what you're doing. The joy is gone, my friend. Gone. The joy is gone. <laughs> it's just, it just evaporates. It's just not worth yeah. it. So, I mean, yeah, so there is something useful. And yes, if you want to achieve gauge and you want to work really hard to do the golden loop, I absolutely recommend it because it is a way to overcome. If you're hitting gauge going width wise, but you are just, a hairball short. So where I focus my, my, um, gauge, uh, desire to meet is always with the width of the product as opposed to the height of the product. And the reason why is because I can usually, cause I'm usually just like a frog hair's breadth away from reaching gauge. Um, cause my, my gauge is really pretty, um, steady and right in the middle. I hit most um, designers gauges, but um, I can block that in. I can block that frog hair's breadth in. Now, if you are severely short, then you need to do something to adjust it, especially uh, you either have to decide to work yourself into that golden loop and make friends with it, or you need to abandon that pattern and say, you know what, this isn't for me because that gauge is that important. Yeah, let me use an example um, for rows. Let's say you're making a, a sweater mm. and you're working from bottom up on a panel and yep. your gauge for four inches is a yep. half inch off. Mm-hmm. Okay, now that doesn't seem like a whole lot, mm-hmm. but divide that by four and you've got an eighth of an inch added to every inch. Mm-hmm. So now every inch is actually equal to an inch and an eighth, mm-hmm. meaning over the course of, say 20 inches that's now two and a half inches of extra length yes and you're talking if if you're over gauge yes if you're over gauge if you're Mm -hmm. under gauge Uh again the same principle applies but but you you have to remember that even though gauge is usually four inches by four inches if you divide that by four if you divide uh let's say you need 12 rows for four inches that's three rows per inch. But if you've got two and a half rows per inch, think about how, how much less, how mm-hmm. much shorter your piece is going to be. Yeah. Um, so even um, the smallest things. We do have tough. a comment. Um, I don't want to murder your name. And I want to, I want to say Mar Margie or Margie Margit. Is it Margit? I, and I apologize if I'm saying it wrong. But you have a very good point. If you don't hit the height of a gauge, then depending on a pattern, you can always adjust it by adding more rows or rounds to hit the garment measurements. You just need to know how to adjust the length and be brave. And that comes with time and skill and practice. Mm -hmm. Because I completely agree with you. Um, Right. And you just have to watch out for (laughs) things like um, armhole shaping, if there is any. Um, Neck shaping and that sort of thing. Because if there is neck shaping for some sort of border Mm -hmm. then even the the shaping that you have here happens over a smaller um area so you just have to be really careful (laughs) margaret is her name (laughs) she said you nailed it on the third time (laughs) thank you (laughs) i i hate trying to say people's names but i wanted to make sure i trust you Personally, I, I think that's the former teacher in me who's going, I think it looks like that. Yeah. <laughs> so good. I I'm glad we got it. Us. 
but yeah, so you, what you were saying about the, the neckline, that's completely true. And anytime, like if you're okay, so you can hit gauge and hitting gauge allows you also to make personal adjustments. Like, um, say you're making a sweater. I made a sweater for, um, Stephanie's friend and his body length was much longer and his arm length was much longer than the actual pattern. So I had to adjust, you know, between the armpit and the hip where he wanted it to hit. So when you're on gauge, that allows you to then make personal adjustments like that because you're still working in. Um, Carolina says the height is the most difficult part. It is. And I, I think that most crosshairs struggle with that one. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, when I we think were, you're right. Um, it's... Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, it's just really easy to change hook size, but that's that's not always going to solve the height issue. Um, I was a part of the uh, Scapies group when they were doing the Huga uh, shawl, and that was the first time that I had ever heard of the Golden Loop. And um, Lord have mercy, I cannot remember her name. Esther, she does um, nuts. I think it's like nuts about crochet or something like that. She puts out videos each one of their make alongs and crochet alongs to help people with the pattern so she taught the golden loop and like i said this is like 2017 so it's been a really long time since i've even looked at it but i had never even heard of that until that time you know and i'd never even gauged anything i think 2017 is the first time that i became obsessed with gauging things so, I mean, for me, it was uh, a wing and a prayer when I would start a project mm -hmm. because um, like, oh, God, I hope this fits when it, I'm finished. Right. Yeah. And I, I don't think we talk about the golden loop enough. Um, I don't think so I'm not either. on a soapbox or anything because I, I generally um, do a lot of designs that don't require a, a close eye on gauge, but mm -hmm. um, I'm it's <laughs> Yeah, it's like I hate it, so I'm avoiding it. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> I provide it if you I'm want to be obsessed about it, but <laughs> but I I don't think I was doing research for this <laughs> podcast and um re, you know was reminded that the golden loop is a thing, but even the top posts that were showing up in Google search really didn't talk a lot about it. So mm. you know, it's great to talk about. Yes, you need to meet gauge, but how do you do that? I mean, yeah. yeah. So you make the gauge swatch and you measure four by four, but mm -hmm. what if it's off? So yeah. hopefully, yeah. you know, that the width, the row, um, sorry, the stitches, the number of stitches per four inches can be adjusted by hook size and the number yeah. of rows per four inches can be adjusted by golden loop. We hope right. <laughs> that's right. our hope. Right. And you know what? You know, if you try that golden loop and you find you love it, please let us know because we want to know how <laughs> and why. Yeah, please do. How did how did you make friends with it? The golden loop was <laughs> just spectacular. For me, it's only a silver loop, but that's all right. It's only a, silver loop. <laughs> a little bit of the shine is off of it. So <laughs> it's tarnished. Mine mine is more like a burnished. You know, one thing know that we didn't saying. talk about yet, other ways to ensure that you have, that you're meet engaged. This, Biz, I'm sure this has never happened to you. Oh, I'm you sure You start a project. <laughs> I'm being sarcastic because um, we all do it. Um, you start that shiny new object, that crochet object, and you're just crocheting away. Um, and it gets to be December 5th and you've still got Christmas gifts to make or holiday gifts to make or whatever you do at that time of year. And you go, oh, well, mm, that's got to go. It's and it comes down. January and you pick it back up and you've lost the pattern. You go, <laughs> I have no idea. I never do that. I'm super organized. Oh, no, 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 no. Right. So my advice is to ensure that you're meeting gauge. One way is to always make note of the hook that you're using. I'm constant. I use H all the time. That's five millimeter. That's my go-to. Mm -hmm. So if I change it to an I, I better make note because I'm oh, just, same. I completely forget that that mm -hmm. was something different. Yes. I actually had a blanket design that I did in chunks over the, uh, the spring and I made the middle and then I had to do something else. So I set it aside and then 
I made the sides and I set it aside. Well, in between making those, I changed my hook. And I didn't. I know where this is going. <laughs> and I didn't mark it down. And so when I did the actual pattern for the testers, I actually, I did mark it down in my book, but I, it, it became this fiasco during the testing period because they're like, well, which one is which? And I'm like, good question. Because, you know, <laughs> like I can't even remember what I did. Did I, I use the G know. and the F? Did I just use the G? Did I, did I, I don't remember what I did because normally I use an F when I'm using like a DK weight and I'm designing with it. Well, I used a G this time. Don't ask me why. Why did I use a G? Because I never I used a G. Right? So it was just. Well, I will say okay. that when I do change from my beloved H, it's for a good reason. So mm -hmm. I tend not to just willy nilly, but, but, but I have to mark it down. Otherwise it's yes. just, you know, I do lots of squares tons of squares right and mm -hmm. in fact right here i've got squares Come right out. here beside me right all over the place <laughs> most of my and squares go up here just because i am i'm, I'm usually screwing around with something so they go up on my little wall behind me i um mm -hmm. i was doing this as we were getting ready to go on go live mm -hmm. and i'm looking at the hook going that's an h is that what I was using the other day? Oh, I should stop making that square. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. You have another oh, really Margate? good point on this list too. Um, oh yeah. That don't assume that just because you met Gage in the swatch, that you're going to maintain Gage once you start your project. You need Big to one. check your mm -hmm. Gage throughout the project often. That is a yeah. good point. Yeah. I mean, it's just like counting on a, on a big project, counting stitches, you need to count to make sure you haven't lost a stitch somewhere and you have to frog back halfway. The same with gauge. You don't want to be almost done and discover that things are looking wonky when they shouldn't. Uh-huh. Absolutely. Uh, we've got a couple of uh, comments mm -hmm. here. Camper 14 says, I messed up twice because of the wrong hook. I've been there, <laughs> been there. <laughs> And Margaret has a, a big question. So hi. Oh, from behind it. But um, the golden loop, if you need to make that loop higher than normal to hit the ga gauge height, then will it not make the stitch post more loose than normal? Saying that I never tried it because I never really understood the golden loop. I thought it was like extending the stitch at the start or herringbone stitch where you pull up a loop. That that was the golden loop. Yes. No, the, go your... the golden loop is always the first one that you pull up after you've inserted the hook in the stitch. So yeah. with so a single her crochet. Question is, does, it make, does it make it more loose than normal? I think that, I think that's where you end up practicing your tension because you're going to have to work on your tension mm -hmm. a little bit with that. And that's kind of where you have to make friends with that golden loop is because it does alter your normal crochet um, rhythm. It does. And I do think it, 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 if you think about it, if you're making, say you want to make the golden loop a little higher uh -huh. um, to make the, the row count, um, you would have less rows per inch if you did that. Um, that's going to make it, it is going to make a looser fabric because the tighter your rows are, so mm -hmm. the shorter your golden loop, the tighter your rows are, I think the drape changes. So mm -hmm. yes, you might have to, once you get your golden loop right, you might have to adjust your hook size. Mm -hmm. So it's an experiment on yeah. that gauge swatch to get <laughs> and those I'm just two gonna be, to match each other. I'm going to be completely honest. And that's kind of why I avoid the golden loop. And so, and I just, because what you had mentioned, Margaret, earlier was that, you know, just make more rounds to reach your, your length that you need to hit before, you know, if you're working on a pattern that has panels, et cetera. Um, that's kind of where I live or the item. Cause I make a lot of long coat length type sweaters. So a lot of, I'm like, you know, if it's an inch shorter when I'm done, I'm just not going to stress out over it. If it's pretty <laughs> close to their knees, we're good. I just, I give myself maybe too much grace. Maybe I'm a little bit too cavalier with some things concerning, you know, hitting numbers, but for me, 
I have to do that in order to not stress out over perfectionism because I have a bad habit of stressing out <laughs> over perfectionism and I can go too far with it. And these are yeah. my coping skills that I've learned how to still be happy with my end product without stressing. So sorry, and that I, was a really I long applaud, no, I I No, I applaud that. I applaud that. I am uh, a perfectionist to a point and stress is not my friend. So I'm there no. with you. Yeah, right. it's that whole, you know, going back to it's it's a mindful thing and we want it to be a happy thing. Mm -hmm. So, um, all right. Let's see. We talked about what the gauge section includes and a pattern. Did we talk about that? Yeah. Um not exactly. Um I mean the standard is this many stitches by this many rows equals four inches. That's the standard. Now I will say, because I do a lot of squares, um, for instance, the one that you showed in the, in the presentation, um, I this will one? do rounds. Um, no, it's the, it's in the things that you wouldn't think of gauge. Okay. Hold on. I'm getting there. So if you look at that, um, you can't do a typical, this many stitches by this many rows because it's in the round. So what I will do is I will say rounds for this particular square. I say rounds one through three equals 3.5 inches across. And that way you can make, you can make one square or you can make rounds one through three and see how close you got. So the same principles apply with adjusting. It's just that it's in the round and you, you'll you see it written that way instead of stitches by rows equals this. Right. Um, right. Another thing I will see is, um, oh, what was I? Oh, if, um, if you happen to have a stitch pattern, say for instance, you're doing um, a lace stitch or something like that, the gauge section should tell you what that gauge is based on. Is yes. it based on one stitch? So is it based on mm -hmm. double crochet or something like that? Mm -hmm. Or is it in pattern? So when they say in pattern, they mean following the however many rows or rounds it takes to create that stitch pattern look. And that's what they're basing it on, which gets and a little like tricky. That, I was just going to say that can get a little bit tricky because I have a tendency to run into that kind of stuff because of the sweaters and things that I make. Because a lot of them have some kind of pattern to them that's going to alter your normal basic single crochet, so many rows by so many um, stitches. <coughs> Excuse me. So um, typically what I will do is figure out the repeat of the pattern itself. And I will still just make a small um, sample of it just because I don't want to be starting on my sleeve or whatever. And it changes to this graph pattern that's different from what was going on in the sweater and I need to match it. I'm not going to be three quarters of the way into the sleeve and then go, oh gosh, maybe I should measure this because now I've got enough space. No, I'm going yeah. to figure out. It takes a little bit of extra oomph to... Um, if you're going to do something that says in pattern and I, mm -hmm. I'm maybe overkilled on that, but it's just something to really think about. Well, I think what I would, I wish that designers would consider doing in that is, is actually creating a measurable gauge swatch, just writing out the instructions for a measurable gauge swatch. Yes. Um, and that way that. and show you how to measure it. Yes. Yes, I completely agree with that. I feel like that would be a really, really good. And that actually inspires me as a designer to do that because um, while I'm typically doing uh, blankets and things like that, where I literally, your gauge does not matter. Um, the only thing I will tell you is that if you use a DK weight, you're going to end up with more of a baby size blanket. If you use worsted weight or, you know, and if you use chunky weight, you're going to be covering a king size bed. 
I'm pretty, <laughs> I'm pretty loose with my terminology as far as my, my gauge is concerned with my blankets. When I'm talking about things, I don't design them much anymore. And I know everybody has their loves, but I hate hats. I hate them so much. I hate making them. I hate designing them. And that is why you will only find maybe three or four patterns in all of my, hun my hundred and some odd patterns for hats. But um, that is another one where you have to be conscious of, you know, like you need to know how big the crown is supposed to be. And you're going to check the diameter or the, yeah, the diameter of the circle for that particular mm -hmm. gauge. Um, I literally forgot what I was saying. So I'm just rambling now. <laughs> you can take it away. <laughs> oh, <laughs> we're just well, going to call I, it 50 year old brain today. I, that's a, that's perfectly fine. I, I have avoided making hats myself. Um, because I haven't had a lot of success, but I made myself a challenge this fall mm -hmm. to learn how to design hats. I know that I know all the math behind it, mm -hmm. all of the formulas, all of the stuff. I even have some amazing, um, there are tools that you can use that you don't ever have to figure anything out. You just put your circle on it and it goes, yeah, that's the right size. Wow. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's, we'll see if it works. But um, I am just getting into crochet design for hats. So I, I actually forced myself to join Sweet Potato 3's crochet um, ch uh, cancer challenge in October. Oh. All she does is hats. Like, this is it. I'm That's either going to fall flat on my face or I will figure this out. Is, so. that, is that where this one came from? Oh no, this was just me going, I love granny squares, bucket hats are great. Let's try it. Um, the testing phase was interesting. I'm glad <laughs> I had it tested. Um, but I, um, <clears throat> I think it's okay. I haven't heard any complaints yet, so hopefully it's fine. But that one is real tricky because the granny squares limit how much you can do with the size of a hat because yeah. they they just you can't add an eighth of an inch to a granny square it's just not possible so not usually no um but that was my first ever designed hat ah, we'll see if i do others that's <laughs> awesome though um i i remember what i was originally saying i was talking about adding uh gauge particular gauge watches so anytime maybe you and I should challenge each other that anytime that we work on any stitch beside a single crochet or adult, you know, that we put that particular, a swatch in there. I think we should up our game girl. <laughs> well, I'm about to release a wrap that has, um, a lace pattern alternating with half double crochet. So maybe I should do that. Nice. I have a yeah. shawl pattern that I need to write up. I think I will have to do that as well. Well, there's your challenge. All right. Sweet. There it is. We're going to do it. Um, okay. So we are, where are we? We're at almost 40 minutes. Amazing. Thank you to everybody who's hung out with us for this long. Um, so oh, yeah. we are, <laughs> we, I think we've covered everything that there is to talk about on gauge. Um, unless there's something Margaret else. says, Margaret says hats are definitely something you need to make a gauge swatch. That is correct. Yes. You must. Anything yep. you put on your body basically needs to be gauge swatched. <laughs> Otherwise you're wearing it down around your neck, over your face. All or things. you could just make a market bag. Or it. it's just, <laughs> or the opposite could be true. It could just be a cap. <laughs> Crown <laughs> I hope there's a new baby there coming in the family soon because this ain't <laughs> many adults I know. Here it is. <laughs> yep. Oh my gosh, that's too funny. Um, oh my gosh. A pet hat. Yes, there you go. Just throw some little some little strings on it, and you could you could put it on your cat or your dog. All right. So, Margaret, I'm just going to tell you that Daisy is not going to put up with that. We try to put um, reindeer ears on her last Christmas. 
it was not pleasant. Yeah. So, I've no. never actually put anything on my dogs because, oh, wait, I take that back. Uh, we had a chocolate lab when the kids were little and he was a very patient dog, but we would try put sunglasses on him for a picture and he just would <laughs> bash it off of his face. He's like, no. So after that, we were like, you know what? I don't think dogs actually like wearing clothing. So we've never done that. No. Well, if you look at the pictures of Daisy in my product photos, yeah, she looks really cute. Yeah, but now that is. you know, she absolutely hates it. I want you to understand that there was a treat right over here. See? <laughs> she's got the perfect she, pose. And she's basically going, I'm only doing this because there's a treat. That is not a happy face. <laughs> so, Frankie is a little bit smaller than Daisy. And uh, when she was, when we first got her, she was about 10 pounds. And she would shiver and she was always so cold. So I knit her a sweater and that dog shimmied and wiggled her way out of that sweater. She hated every second of it. And so I just, it's, it's a waste of yarn for me, but I mean, it, that little scarf is super cute though on Daisy. They look so cute, but I might you know, actually it'll get, get away with something like that on Scout. She's the big husky. Maybe, yeah. She 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 wears a, a you know pack for walking and stuff like that. So she might be willing to wear something a little bit more than little Frankie was willing. Cool. Um, so yeah, um, we are okay. We're pretty much done with our conversation about Gage. If you have any questions. Um, like I said before, Miss Debbie has got a, uh, awesome blog post that she's going to be updating with some fresh new information. So I would, um, mark that, you know, put a favorite on your computer so that you can go back and read that when you have questions, um, and stuff like that. Just, it's a good resource to have. Mm -hmm. Um, and, um, I don't really have any information on my blog about Gage. This is his much conversation as I've ever had about Gage. Um, but it's such a necessary thing. It was just, you know, mm -hmm. um, but so tell me what have you been watching this week? Or hmm. have you had the time to watch anything this week? Uh, there was a whole lot of cleaning and weeding going on last weekend. So not a lot of TV. And as I said before, the Phillies are really hot. Um, uh -huh. I don't mean in temperature. I mean, they are, they're hitting it out in the park. Um, so yes. we're watching a lot of baseball. But so are they going to make it to the World Series? Well, I don't know. They did last year. Um, they okay. at least are going to make it to the playoffs. They, they're so far okay. ahead right now that, that they'd have to, well, they've been known to do it before. They would have to really stink the place up to I mean, like, <laughs> lose hard for the month of September, but they should make it to the playoffs. They're just, oh. they're just going crazy. But I ha I did get in a couple of episodes of, I finished this, the, there's only one season on Brit box of redemption. I finished that. Yes. Great season. And I'm hoping they're coming back with, with the second one for that. Um, and I'm about to finish the second season of truth be told on Apple TV with Octavia Spencer. So uh, this particular season has right, um, right. Kate Hudson you telling me as the lead. Still. And she, oh, wow. She's kind of evil. It's her. Um, so I'm, I'm really, okay. I'm about to the big reveal episode. So I'm excited about that. So what have you been watching besides football? Because I know that's um, a thing. I watched. Oh, yes. So your guy <laughs> likes baseball. My guy likes football. And of the NFL variety, not the college football variety, although he mentioned to me the other day that he thought it was really necessary because a lot of the guys at our church down in the South here, everything is SEC. It, it, there's, they don't talk about NFL very much. So, um, <clears throat> excuse me. He said, you know, I want to be able to talk football with the guys at church. So I'm going to need to learn about college football. I'm like, oh, goody, 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 oh. goody. I'm so excited about that. 
Yay. <laughs> so, that's so exciting. It is. I just, you no, know, babe, I'm super happy for you that you're going to make that connection with those people. <laughs> Um, but so, oh uh, the other thing that I have been watching though, is, um, I had to look on my prime. I started a new one called Granite Harbor. That's also on, um, the Brit box. And that one is about, um, a guy who came home from, or not came home, but was part of the RAF and, um, it's from Jamaica. So he's part of the colony um, army, I guess, uh, for England and he goes over to Scotland. So it's got a lot of, you know, more of the Scottish stuff happening. And, um, so he joins a thing there. And of course there's all kinds of misunderstanding this and misunderstanding that and blah, 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 because he comes from the colonies and blah, blah, blah. So, um, it's, but it's a good show. And it's fairly cleanish, you know. Um, so you know me, and I don't really like all the extra stuff. Um, but that was my like cop show for the week. And there's another one on BritBox called The Cleaner. The picture on the front of it is it's like got blood, it's supposed to look like blood because he's a crime scene cleaner, except it is every ounce a comedy and almost nothing about like true crime, no way. or whatever. It's like he goes in to these crime scenes to clean up the mess. And for whatever reason, I'm thinking, does Britain not, you know, you know, clean, cut off the crime scene so that people don't go in there. But I forget that this is a crime scene cleaner. And um, so there's always somebody there that ends up in this situation. That's really <laughs> ridiculous. And this guy is so sarcastic and so funny. And so I actually guffawed out loud several times because it was so off the wall. So I recommend it if you like silly comedy. It's stupid. You've got to be willing to put up with that. Um, and not saying that I didn't necessarily love a lot of things like that, but I, I have a tendency to watch dumb comedy. But I love, I love it. So that one is a good one too. And it, it like gives you the flavor of murder without there actually being murder. And that's a good thing. <laughs> so yeah. Connie says she's going to help you with the SEC, by the way. Yeah. Hey, Connie. It's okay. You can, I don't need to know. <laughs> well, we're football too. So now we've got both going on the Eagles. Yeah. They're hot as well. They went to the Super Bowl. So last year was Philadelphia's year. Yeah. Um, so the Eagles are set. Oh, to that's just... right. The Kelsey brothers. Mm -hmm. Oh, it was hilarious. Um, sure. Yeah. So they, they have their home, not home opener. They have an opener on Sunday. So mm -hmm. I'll be sitting down at 445 right in front of the TV. I don't have gear, but that's all right. Well, and we... Um, we're Packer fans. Okay. So we're from Wisconsin. Originally we live in Florida. Now they, you don't get Packer games down here unless they play new Orleans or, um, Tampa Bay. And so we don't get to see them very often. I've got to get Tony's, um, NFL subscription because we try to do that so that he can at least see their games. So our big, you know, our big, uh, quarterback, Aaron Rodgers, left us. Thank God. And so now we get to, um, we get to move on to Jordan Love, who's been sitting in the background. It's been like for the last two to three years that Aaron Rodgers has not had like a smile on his face when he goes on the field. Mm -hmm. So I'm okay with him leaving. I'm just, you know, I, I don't care one way or the other, really. Um, I just, I was hoping that he was going to have enough chutzpah to just retire, you know, cause like he's at that point, like, dude, you have more gray in your hair than I do. And I'm older than you. It's time to put up the cleats. <laughs> but um, he didn't. He went the way of Brett Favre and he went over to the Jets. So here we are round two. But Tony thinks that Jordan Love is going to be really good this year. We're excited that the Packers might actually do something. And um, other than that, we've just been, you know, we kind of root for the local teams down here. Tampa Bay and New Orleans are our two 
Um, not really big fans of the Jaguars or the Dolphins. I mean, we've got three teams in the peninsula of Florida, for God's sake. <laughs> So, yeah, yeah we just on. got New York and Boston and that kind of stuff going on up here. But <clears throat> anyway, but you're surrounded. Too. That's, gonna... that's <clears throat> what we're. Oh, who that Saints? Connie, you're killing me. Yes, Connie <laughs> lives over in New Orleans. So, oh, oh, all right, all right. Yeah, she's you know, she's a diehard. The Eagles, oh, that's fine. The so whole we're good. LSU Tigers and all of that stuff. So I get to see a lot of that because <laughs> Connie's my Ooh. friend. <laughs> now, Connie, you go, girl. <laughs> but I do, I do have to agree with her on this one point concerning the SEC. Anybody that beats Alabama cannot stand the roll tide. Just throwing that out there. Okay. Well, now that's on our podcast. So thank you for that. Any. You're welcome. Anybody who watches it is now hey, going to go. That's okay. What? Yeah, it's a, it's all right. Uh, I'll take the heat for it. <laughs> so, anywho, um, we have all right. I think we've pretty much hit the end. Is there anything I think else we have? Would, yeah, yeah. Is there anything else that you would like to add to today's chit chat? I don't think so. Gage. Gage, don't hate it. Super important. To live with it. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Make friends with it. And like I said, if you find that you love the Golden Loop, please let us know. Let us know why. We're on Facebook, Instagram, email. Oh, go. that what? brings up the next point. Um, I want to one more time put this bad boy up because we have yes. our Instagram winner. So um, we're going to talk about this one more time. Uh, PVJ crochets. Thank you for participating in our challenge on Instagram. We have a fall fashion challenge happening on Instagram for the month of September. We have a hashtag that we would like for you to use. We'd love it. If you'd follow us, if you don't, it's okay, but we are at busy crochet and at Madam stitch on, um, Instagram. And so we are putting up daily, um, prompts for you to share your favorite fall fashions this last week. We did neckwear, which included cowls, scarves, infinity scarves, and um, what was the other one? Oh, um, I think we talked about snoods. snoods. Did we do oh, snoods? I don't think we did. Um, but it was just basically cowl scarves and infinity scarves. So we had you share your favorite yarns that you like to make that stuff out of. We had people share their favorite uh, cowls. You know, we like to see you guys. We like to see you guys out in the wild using your stuff. Um, so we're going to do the same thing this next week because our next podcast, which is next Friday at 1 p.m. Central, 2 p.m. Eastern, is going to be about shawls and wraps. So if you are a shawl or wrap maker and you're on Instagram and you'd like to join the challenge because you win either a free pattern from me or Debbie um, for being included in the Instagram challenge. I think we're going to add ponchos to that too. We can do ponchos, okay. right? Ponchos, yes. Wraps, shawl, shawls, yep. Yeah. Shawls wrapped in ponchos. So um, make sure that you're following us on Instagram so that you can um, see when we put the notification up for the prompts and stuff like that because we do it every single day and you don't want to miss it. Um, and we will contact you through Instagram if you're one of the winners. So PBJ Crochets, if you're watching, we will be contacting you through Instagram with your coupon code. Dun, 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 dun. I think we're done. <laughs> so join us over there. Thank you for joining us here. We really appreciate it. And we hope that you enjoyed today's new format for the show. Let us know, please leave a comment. Let us know if you liked the format or if it was too busy or it wasn't interesting. Just give a shout out. Because we are trying to up our game. All right. You guys take care. Have a great day and a wonderful weekend. Happy crocheting, y'all. <laughs>